Before we get into the show, I want to tell you about the upcoming Clinical Foundations Mentorship Program with our good friend Erica Gallantin from Sovereignty Herbs. So this is coming up from October 1st, 2024, all the way to March 31st, 2025. And the application deadline for 2024 is September 1st. So that's coming up. You will work directly with Erica, who has almost 20 years of clinical experience where the clinical programs are designed to help you gain confidence in your skills and help you move forward in your clinical and business career. The program may be a good fit for you if you are transitioning from graduate to practitioner, taking the leap from theory to real life clinical practice, seeking expertise and guidance in your case histories, needing assistance in developing your own protocols, desiring feedback about your clinical and legal forms, looking for support when dissecting complex cases, gaining confidence in your capacity to practice as a clinical herbalist, or you're in the process of obtaining registered herbalist status, RH, with the American Herbalist Guild. Finding a clinical mentor is instrumental to achieving your goals of becoming a clinical herbalist, especially as you are transitioning from herbalism student to practitioner. The online interactive Clinical Foundations Mentorship Program was created to provide guidance and support as you embark on your journey of clinical practice. So Erica has been a longtime friend to not just me, but the Herb Rally community. I highly trust her knowledge, skills, and teaching, so I definitely recommend checking out this program. I will leave a link at the top of today's podcast show notes where you could click the button and learn more about the program. Also, I think I'll read a couple of testimonials from previous Clinical Foundations graduates. So the first one, they said, the online mentorship course is inspiring and brilliantly designed. I love the way that an immediate community can be found in meeting more practicing herbalists like myself getting started in clinical work. And another person wrote, Observing Erica in clinic was tremendously beneficial with the added bonus of group discussion after each case. My understanding of what a clinical herbalist's actual casework looks like has evolved. After this work with Erica, I feel so much more confident about stepping into this career. So some amazing testimonials. Definitely recommend checking it out. Uh, Like I said, I'll leave a link at the top of today's podcast show notes. Um, And one more time, The deadline is going to be September 1st, 2024 to register for Erica's course. Learn more at SovereigntyHerbs.com slash clinical dash foundations, or just click the link in the podcast show notes. Now on to the show. Hey everyone, it's Mason and you're listening to Herb Rally. Today's episode is with Yamaya Kimmel and Yamaya is the founder and owner of Yamaya's Apothecary, an herbal apothecary based in Eureka, California. In this conversation, we chat about being an herbal entrepreneur, opening her apothecary, advice to those who may want to open an herb shop, regulations, the fun topic of regulations, uh, vitalism, some of her current plant allies, and a whole lot more. To learn more about Yamaya and her work, simply go to yamayasapothecary.com, and I'll leave plenty of other links in the podcast show notes as well. So a huge thanks to Yamaya for joining me on the show. I had a blast chatting it up with her. Hope to have her back on the show someday. Would be even better if I was able to visit beautiful Northern California, NorCal. Love it out there. Uh, but yeah, definitely check out Yamaya and her work. She's very inspiring. Had a great time chatting it up with her. And it's on our YouTube version of this episode, it's receiving a ton of great feedback as well. So know you're going to love this one. Um, and also before we get into the show, big shout out and thank you to all of our Herb Rally Schoolhouse members. Thank you all so much for your support. If you'd like to learn more about the Herb Rally Schoolhouse, simply go to herbrally.com slash schoolhouse. And it's only $10 a month, and it's one of the best ways you can help support what we're doing here at Herb Rally. So if you enjoy the show, you want to give back in some way, consider becoming an Herb Rally Schoolhouse member. Uh, We have lots of uh, classes in the membership area. There's also herbal community discounts, uh, private Facebook group, etc. So one more time, herbrally.com slash schoolhouse, and and you can use coupon code podcast at checkout to get your first 30 days for free. Also, before we get into the show, I'd love to shout out another five-star Apple podcast written review. Uh, And this one is left by S Rocket. And S Rocket says, thank you so much for the podcast. As a new clinical herbalist, I can't thank you enough for your informative podcast. Your guests are incredible and your interview style is very easy to listen to. I have learned so much herbal knowledge from your show. I'm greatly appreciative. And thank you so much, S. Rocket, for taking the time to leave this fantabulous review. It truly made my day. I'm not just saying that. Um, Reading these always does really bring a smile to my face. And um, 
Uh, I love knowing that it's helping you along in your early clinical herbalist journey. So uh, we do try to have a diverse array of uh, herbalists on the show and content on the show. And it uh, just makes me really happy knowing that you're getting a lot out of it. And to you, dear listener, if you haven't left if you haven't left us a review yet, uh, could you pretty please take a second and leave us some sort of five-star ranking uh, as well as a written review in Apple Podcasts or wherever you happen to listen to these shows. It, it really does help out the discoverability. Um, and yeah, I always love reading these things. So that's going to do it for me today. Uh, enjoy today's episode with none other than Yamaya Kimmel from Yamaya's Apothecary. Talk to you soon. Welcome to the Herbalist Hour. This is where community gather, merging the power of people and the flowers, the sweet and the bitter to the salty, the sour. Oh, mommy, it's time for the Herbalist Hour. Welcome back to the Herbalist Hour. Today, I'm excited to have on Yamaya Kimmel from Yamaya's Apothecary. Welcome to the show, Yamaya. Thank you so much for having me, Mason. It's an honor to be here. Um, I remember a couple years ago, I was visiting Northern California and... Uh, we had some communication. I was bummed that we didn't actually get a chance to hang out in person, but we'll have to settle for Zoom for now. I know Amanda and I will be back in your neck of, wo- neck of the woods at some point, uh, but for now, I'd like to get to know Yamai a little bit more. Uh, how did you get into this whole herbalism thing? Well, it was sort of like one of those spiraling paths that just one door opened and led to another thing. Um, it started around when I was 19. I was living in Miami where I grew up. And, you know, Miami is a big city, but it's also a haven for plants. Um, Pretty much almost anything grows there. And I took all of that for granted because I wasn't really, you know, in thinking about plants until I was 19. And I had this friend who was obsessed with plants. And I've never met anybody else Mm -hmm. like that up until that point. And he was, was the first person I met who spoke to his plants. And he would wake up every morning and he would go into his garden and he would greet each plant by its Latin name. And I witnessed this and I was like, wow, that's, of course, why wouldn't you, instead of thinking it was weird, I was like, yes, of course, (laughs) why wouldn't you greet your plants? They're living beings. And then I later realized that is a great way to, um, you know, memorize Latin names of plants too. It's an awesome practice. So um, this person also smoked tobacco, but he refused to smoke tobacco around his tobacco plants because he said it was Mm. disrespectful. So this was my first kind of introduction to somebody who, you know, had this kind of reverence for the plant world. And it inspired me to the point where I went out and started my first culinary herb garden. I wasn't that great at it, but um, I like to collect all the different types of sages and mints and basils. And um, I went and took a local plant identification class. And um, somewhere around that time, I ended up with the book A Way of Herbs, hmm. or which I've heard your podcast before. And I know that I am not the first person who <laughs> that book has been a gateway. It's to come up herb. before. Yep. Yeah. So that's interesting. Um, all I know is that when I picked it up, I couldn't put it down. And all of these connections started coming in. Um, you know, I had grown up very, in, you know, mainstream family. We had a lot of processed food. When you're sick, you go to the doctor. Back then you went with the flu and you got antibiotics. I mean, that's just how it was. So I grew up on that whole train. And this was the first time that I sort of just opened my eyes and was like, wow, this is a whole nother approach to health that just resonates so much more with me. And just started really, you know, getting every book I could and learning whatever I could. And a couple of years later, um, when I was 22, I found myself living in Woodstock, New York. And I saw a flyer for a moon lodge with a woman named Susan Wheat. <laughs> and I was like, wow, that, that looks interesting. Um, so I went with a friend who had been her apprentice. Again, another complete eye opener, Susan's energy and the way that she, um, that, that herbalism is a spiritual path for her really resonated with me. Um, I I felt that, you know, it was more, it was going to be more than just a hobby or even more than just a career. It, it, it very much is a spiritual path for me. And I attribute that to Susan. Um, 
And I wasn't able to afford workshops at the time, but I got all her books and I ended up going to all, all of the work weekends that I could to sort of, you know, you could get points and trade for going to the workshops. So that is how I studied with Susan. And I was never her apprentice, you know, just did that. But she and I got along really well. And I just, um, I love her wisdom. I love her take. I love her approach on, um, you know, herbalism as a spiritual path, as, as something, you know, that is people's medicine that people have been doing since the beginning of time. And I later was living in the Schwankunk Mountains and started to get really excited because I started to learn how to identify the things that were growing around me. I started harvesting and making my first, I guess I can't say medicines, but we all know. <laughs> <laughs> herbal remedies. preparation yeah <laughs> remedies we all know where medicine really comes yeah. from um and um just it kind of just took off from there i became obsessed pretty quickly and um i think the big turning point was when i saw a flyer for the women's herbal conference that mm. rosemary gladstar used to or i don't know does she still put it on no is that the new england one yeah yeah oh. At the time she was putting it on right. and um you know during that time this was like early 2000 like 2001 2002 and the internet was there right but it wasn't like the primary source of doing things for a lot of people so it wasn't for me so i saw the phone number on the flyer and at the time i was a musician and i taught drumming classes sacred drum and chant i taught drumming classes and i was trying to figure out a way to go to this conference because i couldn't really afford it so I was like, I wonder if maybe they want a drum class or a drum circle or a performance of some kind. So I called up the number on the flyer. I got Rosemary herself. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. And uh, I told her a little bit about what I did and was there a place for that? And she says, why don't you sing for me over the phone right now? Wow. <laughs> yeah. So I sung for her. I can't remember what it was, but I sung for her <laughs> over the phone. She was so awesome and supportive, you know, gave me the gig. And, um, you know, once that conference, that's a whole nother story that maybe we'll save for later, but, um, it, it just blew my mind and I felt like, oh, I found my people. Yeah. You're very resourceful. You, uh, at Susan's, you would do work trade to attend classes. You got your foot in the door for the new England women's herbal conference by doing drumming classes. And, um, yeah, it's just really, um, I, I really respect that and admire that about you, Yamaya. Um, so your buddy in Miami was talking to the plants, calling them by their Latin name. I have to imagine Susan Weed is probably also talking to her plants. Now that you're in Northern California, you got your own garden and everything. Do you talk to your plants as well and call them by their I, Latin name? Absolutely. Absolutely. And they <laughs> speak back. You know, I mean, I think most people watching the show are going to know that if you listen, the plants talk. Yeah. Right. And um, sometimes they talk in strange ways. Um. But yeah, I haven't in a long time done that practice of greeting them by their Latin name. Mm -hmm. But I now that I'm talking about it, I feel like I want to start doing that again because I Me just too. think it's a great practice, right? It's how you can memorize and then you're still, you know, talking to the plants at the same time. Absolutely. Who are some of your other mentors? Because I want to say on your bio, I read that you studied with Jane Bothwell at the Dandelion Herbal Center. Uh, I'd love to hear about your experience with that because Jane's another, yet another legend in the herbal community. Um, and I also want to say you studied at the Herbal Academy with Sage Apopham. But yeah, I'd like to hear specifically about your experience with Jane Bothwell and then whoever else you want to talk about. Yeah, so Jane is amazing. I love her, love her, love her. Um, when I first came out to California, which was, oh, I guess in like 2006 or so, I saw a class with Jane at a local herb shop. And I had heard of her because when I was at Rosemary's conference, I got this book. Maybe you've heard of it. It was called The Village Herbalist. It may have had another name, Nancy and Michael Phillips, I think. Oh, yeah, I know. I know that name for sure. Those names. Yeah. What an amazing book. I mean, mm. that, anyway, so throughout the whole book, they had little blurbs about different herbalists in the, you know, in the world. And so I recognized her from that book and was really excited, took the first class, fell in love and um, signed up for her 10 month herbal studies program, which is at Dandelion Herbal Center on her land in Neeland, California. And that was a really, you know, it was it was law it was very intensive and it was hands-on and there was a lot of homework and the curriculum was 
was um, it was Jane Bothwell's curriculum. Also, you're studying Rosemary Gladstar's Science and Art of Herbalism at the same time. Yeah. And so that's your homework. So when you graduate at the end of the 10 months, you get these two certificates, one from Rosemary and one from Jane. So it was it was super fun, a lot of work, but it was, you know, joyful, exciting work. Um, my favorite parts, I would have to say, were the field trips. We got to go on these camping trips. Um, one was to go seaweed harvesting on the Lost Coast in Petrolia. That was amazing. Um, another one was actually we went up to Oregon. Mm. And um, let's see, we stayed, we camped at... Um, horizon which is now strictly medicinal rico's place yep. and we helped with the calendula harvest and we had a talent show in the evening <laughs> so much fun we toured the herb farm um facility which was also amazing and now i they, we didn't do this back then because oshala i don't think was around but now i think they include oshala farm as part of their camping trip awesome shout out to yeah. oshala farm presenting sponsor for the herbalist hour <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. yeah, another beautiful farm. Have you made it up there since? I I haven't, but I really, really want to. Um, yeah, I'm hoping to sometime soon. Awesome. Yeah. So that was, you know, Jane's, you know, big 10-month herbal studies. I took a few other courses, classes with her after that. And then she had this course that I really wanted to take. Now, I graduated that the 10-month study program in 2008. And from that point, for years afterwards... I had been wanting to take this other thing she offered called um, the clinical studies class. And every year that she offered it, something came up for me and I couldn't take it. And so I kept saying next time, next time, next time. Well, a couple of years ago, she retired and I was super sad because I was like, I really need to take this course. And um, I said to myself, if, if she miraculously ever comes out of retirement to teach this course, no matter what, I'm dropping everything and taking it. Mm. And so guess what? She did that this January <laughs> and I got to take it and it was amazing. It was basically a class for clinicians um, and graduates of 10 months. Uh, basically, it was just having clients come in one after the other. And then we all um, together as a group kind of interviewed them, uh, did the intake process, which was overwhelming for me. So I'm sure it was for the clients too. And, um, and then we would, you know, with Jane's, you know, oversight, we would come up with the protocol and then they would come back in a couple of weeks. And it was also amazing. So now I can officially say, I think I've taken all of Jean's classes. Congrats. <laughs> yeah, you're always, and, um, sorry, keep going, Yamaya. Okay. No, I was going to say now she's retired, but Dandelion Herbal Center is now, um, has been taken over by Jessica Shepard and Allison Paklimba. And they are amazing, amazing herbalists. And so I definitely want to let people know that if they're considering taking classes at Dandelion, like definitely do it because those ladies are holding it down and they're doing an amazing job as well. Yeah. Uh, I want to say I saw that they started a, a podcast, an herbal podcast. I'm not sure if they're keeping that oh. up or not, but yeah, I saw that. That was like six months ago um, and they released wow. like one episode. I'm not sure if they're still keeping it up or not, but yeah. Dandelion Herbal Center. How close is that to, are you in Arcata? Well, I'm in Bayside, so okay. I'm about 15 minutes from Arcata, but okay. I'm also about 15 minutes from Dandelion. Like if I get oh, wow. to the end of the road and I go one direction, I go to Arcata. If I go the other direction, I can go up the hill to Neeland, um, which is where they are. Just a quick break from the show to let you know about our herbalism freebies. So if you'd like to get a bunch of eBooks, herbal community discounts, videos, audio lessons, all the above and more, uh, you could go to herbrally.com and at the top of the navigation menu, you're, you're gonna see a button that says freebies. So when you fill out that form, you're gonna be signing up for our email newsletter and in exchange, you're gonna get a ton of herbalism freebies um, and you're gonna love the email newsletter because it updates you on herbalism events, uh, new YouTube videos, etc. So I know you're gonna love it. So thank you so much and now back to the show. Amazing. It's beautiful. It's gorgeous up there. Really is. Yeah. Um, so also you're kind of close to Eureka, California, I'd imagine. Yeah. Yeah. I'm like 10 minutes from Eureka. I'm like uh, kind of 
halfway between Arcata and Eureka. Such a beautiful part of the country. But I was going to say, that's one thing I'm impressed about with you. Before we jumped on the call, I was uh, listening to your interview on the Herbal Entrepreneur YouTube channel. Uh, and uh, that was recorded two years ago. And you were saying you were studying some other course, and then you had plans to study another course. And I just feel like you're always learning. And how important is that, would you say, for the uh, aspiring herbalist to, to continuously add on to their studies? Yeah, because herbalism is a lifelong, you're going to get to the end of your life and you're still not going to know everything that you want to know about yeah. herbs. Yeah. Um, it, it really is a lifelong and beyond, like lifetime, several lifetime long pursuit, I would say. Yeah, um, absolutely. At, yeah, but at the same time, I would tell people like, yes, you have to keep learning. Take whatever courses you, you can. If you can't afford to take courses, be resourceful, as we were talking about before. Yeah. Figure out ways that you can learn from you know, people who inspire you and from books, you know, and from the plants, spend right. time with the plants, you know, don't just read books. Right. Um, but at some point, if you want to start practicing or if you want to start an herbal business, and this is what I learned from Sage of Popham, because I was definitely one of these people where you're ready, but you feel like you have to take one more course and you feel like you have to take, read one more book before you actually start to put yourself out there. And Sage is like, no, you, you get to a point where you're overqualified and, and you still need the next way to learn is really just by practicing. Mm. And so, you know, that's really important. I would say definitely know your shit. Yeah. Like spend your time and don't ever stop educating yourself. But at some point you're going to have to come out of that shell and start, you know, doing it. Yeah. I don't know why, but for some reason this popped in my head. It kind of reminds me of parenthood. Sometimes you think you you got to like plan and get everything ready, which you should. You really should prepare and read the books and all this and that. But eventually, you're just going to have to dive and, uh, yeah. you know, become a parent. And then you kind of learn yeah. a lot on the job, so to speak. That's the same thing. It's exactly like becoming a parent, right? Because you can get to the point in your life where you're like, okay, I'm ready, but no, nah, I'm not really ready. And then, you know, at some point, you just have the kid and you got to just learn as you go. And, you know, people are resilient, just like children are resilient. You know, you're as long as your intentions are good yeah. and you're doing the work that it takes to be the best you can, you're you're going to eventually succeed. And the failures can be successes, too, as long as you look at them and learn from them. That's great advice. So back in 2008 is when I want to say you completed Jane Bothwell's uh, original herbal course back, back then, what's that 16 years ago now, um, did you kind of have an idea like, Oh, I want to run a, an apothecary or be a clinical herbalist. Or did, what was your idea of what you wanted to do in the herbal field at the time? Yeah. At the time, my children were really young. And mm -hmm. so just completing that course was a huge success for me. And I was, you know, knew that I wanted to just keep working with herbs. And I start that was, I guess, around the time I started to make a lot of things and I had extra and I started giving them away. And then people started contacting me and asking me to buy things. Mm. So I think at that point I was like, okay, I should start an herbal products business because at least it will support my, you know, obsession and be able <laughs> to, you know, help offset some of the costs for this. Sure. Um, the clinic, the clinical part of it came later was after I already had an herbal products business and I was starting to just casually see friends that just wanted more information and then started realizing, wow, you know, products are awesome and I'm never going to stop doing it, but I really like being able to talk to somebody one-on-one -on -one and to be able to tailor a protocol and a formula that's unique to that person mm -hmm. in their story. And so I guess that just sort of evolved over time. And now it's my favorite thing. I love, I love working one-on-one -on -one with clients. I think that's my absolute favorite part. And now you're doing it. Uh, I saw on your website, you've got a, a client intake form and everything. So I would like to definitely get uh, more to that later in the conversation. But uh, I also want to say I read on your bio that you started Yamaya's Apothecary after taking Herbal Academy's entrepreneurship which is really cool. Mm -hmm. We've, we've worked a little bit with herbal, I'm sorry. Um, yeah. Herbal Academy over the, over the years for sure. And I'm just kind of curious, um, what was that experience like? Would you recommend the course and, uh, yeah, just your journey starting in Maya's apothecary in general? Yeah. So that course is now called the business course. Mm. I believe that's the new name, but at the time it was the herbal entrepreneur course. And it's essentially the same thing. I think they've added a few more resources and changed a couple of things. 
Um, but it's, it's a fabulous course because it really goes through from beginning to end all of the ins and outs that are specific to starting an herbal business. Mm. So, you know, it does go through a little, you know, like history of herbalism. It, it does cover a few herby specific type of things, but mostly it's like how to get your business plan going. And, um, you know, here are all the different ways you can work as an herbalist. And then it spoke about how to sort of get started in each one, what tools you need, what type of education is recommended, and, you know, how to, like, have a DBA, you know, how to do your booking, how to make your labels GMP, you know, FDA compliant, GMPs, um, you know, just all of these little things that, like, you don't necessarily learn when you're learning about the plants themselves. And most of us who are herbalists, we don't start out as business people. We, we sort of have to just learn as we go. So that I never went to business school. I knew nothing about starting a business. So that kind of fills in all those gaps. And they have a tremendous amount of resources. So they have lists and lists and lists of like, okay, here's where you can source all of your bottles from. Here are some great places to do that. Here's ways that you can, you know, buy wholesale from whatever companies, you know, just things that people need to consider. Mm. And so I went through it lesson by lesson. I did the work, I took the quizzes, but then I took time to sort of like assimilate everything and apply it. So I just like went step by step. And before I knew it, by the end of the class, I had a herbal business going. Yeah. Amanda and I keep toying with this idea that we want to start an herbal products business, but not really just kind of like a, um, like you said, you want to, you know, kind of offset the cost of your hobby in a way, or at least that's what it <laughs> sounded like early in the days. And yeah. I'm like, yeah, I think it'd be fun to, to have like an herbal products line. I'm like, where do I start? So I do think that, um, the herbal Academy's entrepreneurship course would be a, a really solid choice for that. That is absolutely a great place to start. Another awesome place to start, which is also where I got a lot of my inspiration to start is, um, Yolanda. And mm -hmm. um, the Herbal Entrepreneur, as you know, because I yeah. think you've been on it, right? The conference. I, I, yeah, a couple of years ago. Yep. Yeah, it is. That is also around that time. I was just eating up that conference, too. And I think I was one of the I may have been one of the original members of the Herbal Circle, and I'm still a wow. member of it. That's awesome. I'm not quite as active as I was when I was getting everything up and going. But um, that is also an amazing place to be if you're starting an herbal business, because you have all these people that are in that same boat. And different people have different strengths. So they offer little like workshops to each other. We had tea rooms, got together, helped each other solve their issues on how to move forward. And um, I, that is another fabulous. If people are starting an herbal, any kind of herbal business, I would say the herbal circle is a great place to start too. All right. Well, you got Yamaya's stamp of approval. I will leave a link <laughs> uh, in the podcast show notes to the YouTube description uh, for uh, herbal entrepreneur. I'll also link to that interview that you did with them on, on their YouTube channel a couple years ago, because there's so many great nuggets in that interview. And I just want to like get a uh, shout out and give props to Yolanda because she really is offering such a fabulous resource for herbalists. Like you said, we're not necessarily born a, as business people. We're more born in the herbal sphere and it's just incredible knowledge that she's imparting to all of us as herbalists. So yeah, y Yolanda is amazing. Yeah. She's one of my she's favorites. A, she's a delight to just like listening to her talk. She always just puts a smile on my face. So um, yeah. absolutely. Well, um, mm -hmm. why don't you tell us more about Yamaya's Apothecary, what you offer, uh, what the website is, et cetera. Yeah. So Yamaya's Apothecary is kind of a two part thing now. Um, there's the product side and there's the consult side. And the product side is mainly online. It is. Um, I have an Etsy shop that's doing really well. Oh, nice. My, um, I have, I do sell products off of the website as well. Um, but a lot of what I do is in person. I don't have a brick and mortar other than my little apothecary, you know, womb cave office. <laughs> <laughs> I like but I, I do sell at markets and local festivals and fairs and things like that. Um, so that's kind of the essence of the product side. And then I have a lot of repeat customers that will, you know, call and I'll deliver, you know, that kind of thing. Um, and then the other side is the consultation side, which right now I'm kind of transitioning more to expanding my clientele. I'm also going to always be doing products because I feel like 
it's my way of staying connected to the plants. I know a lot of like clinicians, a lot of teachers will tell us that, you know, once you're doing clinical full time, you can't really have time to do. But I don't want to be just sitting in office all the time. I feel like I have to be making some products. So what that's going to look like is I won't necessarily have five different flavors of fire cider or 10 different types of elixir. <laughs> But I maybe, will still maybe one flavor have. of fire cider. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, one flavor. The classic. And you know, always have some products going. Um, but right now, um, the clinical practice is something I've been doing for the last couple of years. I love it. I see people locally in Eureka as well as online um, via Zoom, mm. and you know that is just like your standard consultation where we get together. I hear, you know, you know, hear your story, and then formulate a plan and protocol and you know, some herbal formulas and yeah, that kind of thing. It's good to hear that your Etsy shop is doing well because in that interview uh, a couple of years ago, you said that, I think you said you got uh, about two sales per month or something like that. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's more than that now, but I think I also, do, I also do the Etsy ads a little bit and I've oh. been kind of playing with that. And I, you know, for me, it, it actually did help. It helped to get my stuff out there. Now my, you know, now I'm selling every week on Etsy, which is good. So you said you offer consults both in person and on Zoom. Just kind of curious, what percentage is online versus in person for you? Yeah. So right now it's about 70% online, 75% online, 25% in person. Um, I'm wanting to do more in person. Mm -hmm. Not that I'm going to stop doing online, but I really like the idea of sitting with somebody and really being in the room with their energy, because I think that you can get a lot more information, you know, subtly that way. Absolutely. Yeah. And I also really like the idea of, of being part of my local community. So, yeah, but where I'm at right now is I'm seeing uh, people in person one day a week and online two days a week. Okay. Mm -hmm. Good to know. Well, um, I kind of want to go back to the products now, uh, Yumai's Apothecary products. Uh, just advice for those out there. This is a, just a selfish question for myself. So we're going to release a fire cider. Uh, we're going to sell it at Amanda's mom's shop. That's going to be like our first uh, dipping our toe in selling a product. Um, Amanda's a beautiful uh, artist. She she's going to create an awesome logo and label for us and everything. And you know we're kind of getting ideas from other people about what we should put on that label. Like, is there some sort of um, legality we should be uh, considering before we actually start selling this product? Um, like create creating lot numbers or batch numbers or anything like that. Um, just kind of curious, so we don't do anything illegal. If you have any advice for us in that regard. Yeah. So first of all, I want to say Fireside is an excellent first product because it seems to do really well for everybody that I know. Awesome. Um, people seem, you know, people are getting more hip to Firesider now and they love it. So that's an excellent first choice. Thank um, you. That's good to hear, far, actually. <laughs> yeah. As far as the labels, I think it's important to maybe if you can get like a GMP or GM, yeah, GMP class, um, or get your hands on on some of those because it'll kind of walk you through all of the things that you need to do. Um, definitely keep batch numbers, lot numbers. The way I do it is I don't really have like these big, long, multi-number lot numbers because I'm a really small, very small business. I write just the date, um, you know, the date of the batch that I made it because I'm not going to make two different batches on one day. So that's how I do it. Um, but absolutely keep good records, you know, everything that goes in it. When you do your labels, I think the most important thing is get your labels FDA compliant. Don't make claims, obviously. Um, do some research into how, because the FDA is very specific about the font size mm -hmm. and what you're supposed to put on the front versus like the side of the label. I think that would be the first thing to focus on. Because when you're trying to get compliant, you're trying to do all these GMPs, you're not, it's a process. And it's okay to start. I think it's okay to start, especially when you're a small business and you don't have all your ducks in a row yet, but you're maybe working towards that. But the first thing you want to do is get your label going because that is what's going to be out there. That's what's going to be right in everybody's face. And so if that's compliant, then, you know, at least you're getting, you know, when you get looked at, you're getting looked at by people going, oh, okay, they know what they're doing. <laughs> That's great advice. And I, you said maybe take a GMP class. I have to imagine they cover a lot of that probably in the Herbal Academy 
class. Oh yeah, Herbal Academy does. And also if you join the Herbal Circle, and I, I swear, I don't get any money from Yolanda for promoting the Herbal Circle. <laughs> I just really love it. But if you join, there, yeah, there's actually a, a GMP class that's included because you get access to all of these past workshops. Mm. And there was, I think, Guido Masse. Oh, Guido Masse, yep, yep. Guido Masse. Yeah, so I think that he is the one that actually did presented the class. And so that's included with the Herbal Circle membership. You can, you know, go through that entire course. Guido Masse, uh, brilliant herbalist. And uh, I have to say, he probably has a ton of experience in this regard because he went through a lot of that with the um, uh, Urban Moonshine brand. Mm -hmm. uh, so I know he was uh, at the forefront of a lot of uh, the GMPs and all that stuff. So great suggestion. Um, I'll definitely be taking some sort of class before I really um, go full board with this project. But uh, yeah, that's just really exciting. Thank you for sharing, Yamaya. Yeah, no problem. Um, also, a question that came up for me as I was watching your, again, your uh, herbal entrepreneur interview was it, it was kind of briefly touched on and we kind of actually already talked a little bit about this, but um, what, what is it like going from turning your passion and hobby of herbalism into a business? Do you still get the same joy from being an herbalist or is it more like, Oh geez, now I got to go log into my day job. You know what, it, you know what I'm trying to say here? Is it still, is it still a delight? Is it still magical for you? Or is it just kind of um, a job? Yes. Now? Yeah. So the short answer is yes to both. Okay. <laughs> but That's no, a great overall, answer. <laughs> overall, see, because this is now my full-time work. And overall, I feel joy when I come into the apothecary every morning. I give yeah. thanks. Everything else cool. gets left behind. And I am just so ecstatic and grateful to be able to do what I do, to do what I love every day. Because I know not everybody, you know, has that, you know, opportunity or feels like they're able to jump into that. And so ultimately i love it i get really excited by it um it gives me energy there is always those days though where you feel overwhelmed and you feel like you need a break and that's usually when you can't take a break because you have a bunch of new clients that you have to prepare for or you know you're getting ready to do an event and you have to you know get all the products together and so it does i'm not going to say it doesn't get overwhelming you know and at this point, I, I wear all the hats. So there are things that I don't like that I have to do, like, you know, bookkeeping, which I'm not good at, marketing, which I'm horrible at, <laughs> you know, all of these things that I'm just like, okay, I got to get through this because it's part of the job, you know, but the seeing the clients and um, working with the plants and making the products is 95% total ecstatic joy. That's great to hear. And uh, you know what? You said you're horrible at marketing, but technically you're marketing yourself right now and you're doing a well, great job at it. So <laughs> thank you for your help, right? Of course. Yeah. That's what I'm here for. <laughs> it's my role in the herbal world. But um, yeah. uh, do you have any advice to someone who's like considering the idea of opening up an herb shop? Do we really need another herb shop? Like, do you, do you think it's a good, good call? Would you recommend it to someone? And if so, what would you say to that person who's just getting going? First of all, I think we always need another herb shop. Herb shop. <laughs> and I live in a, I live in a uh, county where there's three. There's three like brick and mortar herb shops, which I think is for a small town really uncommon. <laughs> um, and I still think we need more because, you know, every herbalist and I think this goes for any herbal business, not just a shop. But I feel like every herbalist has their own unique take on things. Right. Mm. We all have our things that we focus on. We all have our niches. You know, whether they're intentional or unintentional, we all have our, you know, herbal allies that we work with and we all have our different vibe. And so I feel like, you know, if you're feeling called to open an herb shop, absolutely, please do. But, you know, like I said, I don't have a brick and mortar shop. I know that there is a lot of extra work and money that goes into that. So I would say my best advice, and again, this goes for any herbal business, I think, is to start small. Do it in bite-sized increments and grow with your business. Mm. Because that way, even if you want to be a really big business, at least you can stop at a point where you're like, maybe you get to a point where you're like, you know what? I'm really happy. I'm happy with, you know, the customers or clients I have. I'm happy with the money I'm making. I'm happy with the time I'm putting into it. I'm going to stop here. And it's really hard to do that if you've already bitten off more than you can chew and, you know, spend a bunch of money you know, 
So I think that growing, going as you grow, growing with your business is really, really key. Um, yeah. And just doing things in bite size amounts. And also the other part of that, which is this is something I learned from Yolanda, which blew my mind and changed my entire life, is really hone in on your time management mm. and find a time management system that works for you, especially in the beginning, because most of us are doing all the things in the beginning. And like some of us like me still are, you really you, you'll just like spiral out of control if you try to do everything at once. So like have your days or your specific times that you're doing specific tasks and then stick to that like it's a religion because that will make you so much more productive. Yeah, I remember at Mountain Reserves, we call that batching tasks. You, you like batch mm -hmm. them and so you could really focus on one. Are you still doing um, like five days a week, five hours a day type of schedule? Yeah, that's kind of, let's see, five hours a day. I, I work while my kids are in school. Sure. Um, which is, yeah, nine to like three ish. Um, and then on Thursdays, I will do an evening. I will work five to seven if I have a client that wants to come in during that time. Um, and then, of course, I'm doing occasional markets on the weekends, not every weekend, but, you know, maybe once or twice a month. Um, and, and I've learned how to be really efficient with that time and to just pack it in there and be really focused with whatever the task is that I'm doing and, and, you know, utilize the time as best as I can. I really like the advice of uh, just taking things on as they come, growing slowly with your business. I have to imagine some of that is going to require a bit of patience on your part. Um, would you say that like you had these grandiose visions, you're like, I want to do all this now, or were you kind of patient from the beginning? I don't know. I kind of just, I, like I said, I was just coming out of like, little kid mothering, you know, uh -huh. so I was yeah. just coming into a part of my life where I had the time to do something like this. And I kind of was just, let's see where it goes. That was my mindset. I knew that I was going to do this, whether it was a career or not. So I figured I might as well just, you know, take the steps and see sure. where it goes. But I think because I did that, it became, a, it was a lot more manageable and doable for me than if I had this like, grandiose vision and then let myself down if I had a bad week or something. <laughs> um, but another really awesome thing is like count your wins at the end of each mm. week. Even if, even if it's so small that you're like, Oh, you know, I showed up at the apothecary and I made a plantain tincture or whatever, <laughs> you know, and that's all you did that week. Count that as a win because every little thing that you do is going to add up. And then if you look at it like a few months later, you're going to see how one step, one little tiny step led to another. And you you actually made quite an accomplishment by getting from point A to point B. So, yeah, I think that's really important. That's brilliant advice. And I was just thinking about that the other day is, uh, yeah, we'll, we'll all have a tendency to like stress out and be like, I'm not doing enough. I'm not doing enough. And then, you know, for, for me myself, before I started the podcast, The Herbalist Hour, I had zero episodes of the show published. And I kept, it kept living in my brain. And now we're, you know, by the time this comes out 130 episodes deep, something like that, I could look back on reflect and be like, holy shit, that's, that's actually quite the feat. That's actually yeah, quite the accomplishment for me. Yeah. And, you know, and it's just, um, yeah, I'm going to take this, uh, advice, Yamai, and, and remember to count the, the, uh, the accomplishments that I had at the end of the week. I really love that. Yeah. Another, that was another thing I learned from Yolanda. <laughs> <laughs> Shout out Yolanda, uh, yeah. herbal entrepreneur. Dot com. Yeah. Actually, I don't know the website exactly. Let yeah, me... I think that is it. Herbal okay, cool. Mm -hmm. Sweet. Um, let's hear more about your uh, consultations. Tell us like kind of the ins and outs. Um, what do you charge? How'd you come up with what to charge? All that good stuff. Yeah, that was a lot of help from um, Sage of Popham's course, the mm -hmm. Vitalism course, um, as well as also being um, part of uh, the American Herbalist Guild. I'm not you know, I'm not a registered herbalist there by any means, but they have a lot of um, workshops for people who are becoming clinicians. So I took a few workshops that talked about things like that, how to charge, how to sort of set up your appointments. And Sage's course covered a lot of that as well. And so basically, yeah, you, you can, I have a few options. So option one is the full on consult, which is 125. You come in, that's the intake. So we're going to spend an hour and a half to maybe two hours together. And I am going to get all of your information 
and um, just kind of like hear your story and ask questions that I need to and sort of just try to get a picture of what's going on, not just like the symptoms, but also just like where you're coming from, what your tendencies are, what your constitution is, where your kind of, you know, emotional state is at. And then um, when you go away, I'm going to sit with that. I'm going to do whatever research I need to do. And then I put together a protocol. And so this could be obviously it's going to include herbs. It's going to include um, dietary recommendations, a lot of times lifestyle changes, sometimes supplements, sometimes not. And then this is a really important part. I'm going to contact you. I'm going to show you the protocol and be like, hey, what do you think of this? Let me know what you're resonating with. Let me know what does not feel good to you. Because I think you could have the best protocol in the world, right? <laughs> but if the person is like, I'm not going to do this shit, like right, then right. It's, it's useless. So I want it to be a partnership, right? I don't consider myself a healer. I consider myself a guide. And so I'm guiding you to heal yourself. And so it has to resonate with the person. And so once we're both on board with something that resonates, um, at that point, if I'm getting herbs to them, I will get, you know, get their formulas to them. They're not required to purchase herbs from me, but most of the time they do because I can customize to them. Um, otherwise, I can refer them to places to get high quality formulas. Um, and then I like to check in um, like a few days later to make sure that they're understanding everything on their protocol. They could find whatever supplements they needed to get. They know how to prepare their infusion or decoction or you know, they understand that a dropper full isn't going to be all the way up to the top, that kind of thing. I want to make sure that they totally are set up for success. And then we'll do usually a, at least one follow up, um, unless it's acute, but most of the time it's not acute. And we'll do one or more follow ups, either two weeks or a month or three months later. And um, a lot of times it turns into like a long term relationship where something, you know, a client will start to feel better. And then they'll want to work on another issue and then we'll just keep working, peeling back the layers. And so that's, you know, that's the main part of what it is that I do. Another option is if somebody can't, you know, afford that or they feel like it's they don't want that long term kind of thing. We can do a phone call, like a 25 minute phone call. And that's like twenty five dollars. Hmm. And we talk for about half an hour and then we sort of try to brainstorm and come up with you know ideas to get them going on their situation. Nice. So it sounds like you have tiers, different tiers. That's um, yeah. It sounds like a a really nice living wage for you as well. Um, yeah, but I also want it to be accessible. Accessible. You know, and the yeah, follow ups. Totally. The the follow ups are are half the price of okay. the of the consultation. So the the intake is is probably the if that's the most expensive part. And then the follow ups are sixty. And then you have the phone consults. And then what I something I recently just did that I might do every few months if I feel like I can sustain it is I offer one free consult to somebody in the community. I have a bunch of people, you know, sort of contact me and tell me what their situation is and why they would benefit from a free consult. And then I sort of pick somebody. I try to pick the person that I feel like would benefit the most. And I just did that for the first time. And I actually just contacted the person this week. So I feel like if that goes well, we might do that every, you know, every couple of months to that way, you know, because not everyone can afford even a $25 phone conversation. Right. And I want herbalism to be accessible to people. I don't want it to be this elitist thing because it's right. not, it's, it's right. meant for everyday people. The people's the medicine. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. That's really cool. It's kind of like your community service aspect of your business. I really love yeah. that. Thank you. Yeah. Um, do you have any, would you say, areas of expertise in your practice? Anything that you're passionate about? Or is it kind of just like all-encompassing health coaching type of thing? Yeah, well, um, as far as the niche, that's always been really hard. I know that's hard for a lot of people, but I'm a Gemini and I just love <laughs> it all. I really, really love all the body systems. I love working. I love learning as I go with clients and like just, you know, tackling a new situation. I love that. So I don't ever want to cut off from any of that. But that being said, I feel like, you know, after being in practice for a couple of years as a clinician, you start to see like similar people that walk through your door. Mm -hmm. And so I would say that digestion has really kind of become an area of expertise just because so many people either have straight up digestive disorders, or they have other things 
that are affected by their digestion where, you know, it's maybe not their primary concern, but it ends up being a, a way to sort of, you know, help the situation. And then I myself have had digestive issues that I've dealt with successfully using herbs. So I would say that's, you know, that's definitely something that's sort of becoming an area of expertise. I also seem to get a lot of people with osteoporosis that come through. Mm. Um, so I feel like that's, you know, kind of I'm gaining every time I see a client, I'm learning more. So I feel like I'm gaining more knowledge in that area as well. Um, although I haven't been in practice long enough with one of those clients, right? Because you don't have bone scans every year. You have them like every couple of years. So I haven't been with my osteoporosis clients long enough to see the results of the second bone scan. So I can't wait for that to happen because that'll be another learning experience. I was going to say, we brought this up already, but you're constantly learning. And in a way, you're almost getting paid to learn because your clients are dealing with these different issues. And then, you know, after your consult, you have to go research the whole thing. So yeah, it is. And I think that's why it's called a practice. Right. <laughs> you know, and, and I yeah. think it, like we forget that even like like in a culture that worships doctors, you know, right. let's put everything in the doctor's hand. The doctor knows everything. Doctors doing the same fucking thing. <laughs> like they're learning as they go. Yeah. Because it's a practice. Every right. single time you have a client, you have an opportunity in front of you. You have a case study. And, you know, with herbs, you know, 90% of the time, probably 98% of the time, if you're competent, you're not going to do really much damage, you know, as long as you're not offering something that's like ridiculously strong or, you know, it goes against their other medications or whatever, you know, most of the time it's just going to be a win-win eventually. You're part of these different groups and schools and whatnot. Um, I'm curious because you said you're kind of new in practice and you, you only see the bone scans every couple of years. Are you part of a, an herbalist circle or group where you actually talk about uh, what you're seeing with your different clients um, I'm thinking of say like Camille Freeman, I know has like a, a group or Erica Gallantin and, um, yes. where, where people are able to talk about these different issues. So yeah. Are you part of any of those types of groups? Yeah. So both of those, so <laughs> no way, really? So, well, not exactly. Almost. So, That's funny. okay. So first of all, Jane's last, the clinical course okay. had a lot of that as well, because we would talk about, you know, she would give us time where we would bring up things and sort of brainstorm with each other. So that was, uh, you know, sort of that kind of thing as well. Yeah. Um, I have joined Herbal Practice Connection. I am a part of um, nice. Erica Gallantin's Herbal Practice Connection um, that I guess I've been in there for a few months now, maybe even almost a year. I haven't been as present as I really would like to be. I watch everything like after the fact. Right. But I, I actually feel like maybe today I might jump on the um the what is it i forget what it's called but it's kind of like a tea room where you get together and share your wins um and kind of you know help each other out so i think i would like to be more present uh because i think that's an amazing resource um and then camille i have taken a lot of her courses i've taken i'm always doing deep dive always um cool. took her newsletter course her bloom and not bloom but grow and I just got on the waiting list for the next mentor program because it just looks so awesome. So I hope to be doing that sometime in the next couple of months. And I love both Camille and Erica. They're so amazing and so inspiring. Yeah, I could not agree more. And um, I have yeah. to ask, um, how was that newsletter course with Camille? And uh, Kate, since we're on the topic, can you tell the listener about the newsletter that you put out? Well... <laughs> <laughs> I'm still working through the course because okay. I I stupidly started it around the same time that I started Jane's course. Hmm. So that just finished a few weeks ago. And now I'm going to redo the, like, I haven't really gotten full on into the newsletter course yet. So I'm going to, you know, tackle that. I did, do, did have a newsletter. <laughs> I haven't sent it out in many months because I'm sort of changing my focus from like, you know, promoting the products to, you know, the clinical side of things. Mm. So I'm kind of just, I'm in this sort of like rest and research phase sure. about how to transition my newsletter to, you know, in, in a more like clinical way. And yeah. so I feel like I'm going to go through that course and just kind of like what I did with Herbal Academy, just like apply it as I go. So ask me in, in like two more months and I will give you a more definitive answer. All right. I will touch base with you on that. I, I'm pretty sure I'm on your email newsletter list. And uh, yeah, if you want to sign up, you probably could do that at yamayasapothecary.com. 
Yeah. If you go to the website, there's a pop-up and you can sign up. Awesome. Well, I'll be um, keeping tabs on you, paying attention to what you do with that newsletter. So um, I, I'm pretty sure Camille's newsletter course is closed. I have to imagine she'll open it again at some point. I think it just opened this week. Oh, okay, again. cool. Or, or it right. started. Another round started this week. So I don't gotcha. know if she's still taking um, new people or not. All right. Well, I'll do a little research on that post call and, and throw that in the podcast show notes as well. Um, I know part of your practice is based on vitalism and this has come up a lot in the show. And I want to say a lot of times it's kind of more attributed to say the Paul Bergner side of things. I'm just kind of curious, did you study with Paul uh, or does that kind of more come from the Sage of Popham? It's Sage uh, because Sage yeah. studied with Paul. Um, For but sure. I, yeah. I, took a, <laughs> I took a couple of courses with Paul. Um, I took some of his nutrition courses a couple of years ago which uh, he is amazing. I mean, he is just yeah. spewing out the knowledge. Yeah. <laughs> but vitalism, yeah. So, you know, I actually want to start by like, because I wrote this down because I think this is a really awesome topic that I love to talk about. And Please. so the Oxford definition of vitalism, let's start with that. Okay. So that is the theory that the origin and phenomena of life are dependent on a force or principle distinct from purely chemical or physical forces. So that's kind of really heady, right? But for <laughs> me, it's really about how we are more than our set of symptoms. We're more than our dis-ease. We are even more than our everyday health choices. And all of that is really important. All of that is vital to, you know, getting to the root cause of what is going on. But then there's this other part of us, which is what I like to call our story, right? It's also our constitution. Like each person has a unique constitution, but we also have a story. And um, how ever, since before conception, since conception, at least since we were born and since before we were born up until now, all of those sets of experiences that we have had in our lives are attributing to like, and how we process them, they're attributing to making or breaking our health. And so a lot of times, you know, you have this vital force that, you know, you can call it mojo, you can call it chi, you can call it prana, you know, you can call it life force, whatever you want to call it. Um, and this is all like, sometimes that energy gets stuck in certain areas. Like, for example, you have the person who, um, you know, maybe had throat infections their whole life. And maybe they're having trouble communicating. Maybe they don't know how to express themselves. And so the energy is kind of getting stuck there. And then, of course, like this is a classic one and it's hard for a lot of people, but it's like, you know, you have the sort of protection things that happen when somebody's in a relationship that they're not fully trusting, right? And then they're getting chronic yeast infections or UTIs. Mm -hmm. It's sort of like, you know, the, the body's way of protecting itself. Um, so this is all, I believe, kind of part of what vitalism is. It's more than just what can be like physically or chemically explained. So that's where I like to come from when I work with somebody. I want to hear their story and um, really focus. Like, obviously, it's going to be more than just like, you know, oh, you have diabetes. Here's some cinnamon or, you know, you're stressed out. Take some milky oats. Like that's part of it. That's a very big part of it. That is a huge part of it. But there's also this other place that, you know, people kind of, you know, they need to be addressed for healing, if that makes sense. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. That and that's why, yeah, that's why I like to work one-on-one -on -one because you're getting the story, you're getting the uniqueness of that individual and how they got there. And you so spend me, a lot of time with them too, an hour and a half. Yeah. Yeah. And that's just the initial consult. Right. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> yeah, there's then there's, you know, the follow ups and the emails and all of that. Amazing. Yeah, I want to say a, a quicker question or a quicker answer from you would be who have you not studied with? Because <laughs> <laughs> I feel like everybody I mentioned, you're like, oh, yeah, I've taken classes with them. That's uh, yeah, it's really neat. <laughs> yeah. Who have I not studied with? I haven't studied with Seven Song yet, and I'd really like to. Um, yeah. yeah. Let's see who else. I know there's a lot more. <laughs> I know there For is. Sure. I'm just trying to think in my head. Um, oh, here's someone who I really haven't studied with, but really want to get to know that lives in my area is Krista Sinodinos. Yeah. I haven't studied with her. We live like, you know, 
like not that far from each other, like a town away. And I may have met her once or twice, you know, we're friends on social media, but I haven't really gotten to hang with her and to absorb <laughs> all of her amazing wisdom. And, you know, we both, what we both have in common is we're both Greek herbalists. Oh, <laughs> and I, I just, I really want to connect with her. So like Krista, if you're watching, let's hang, let's talk. <laughs> like I want to learn from you. Um, yeah. Krista, friend of Herb Rally, she actually hosted the 100th episode where she interviewed me for the Herbalist Hour. So yeah, absolutely adore Krista. And yeah, that's who we're visiting when we went to Arcadas. Uh, we hung mm -hmm. out with her. So I was like, shoot, got to hang out with you, Maya, again. Uh, I was well, gonna let's ask, all get together. Let's that'd all be get amazing. Together next we'll time. have to yeah. do that. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, I didn't comment. Thank you for sharing the the vitalism definition. I that's really neat. I never even thought to look that up in the dictionary before, but um, yeah, that's, that was really cool to hear. And like you said, it's pretty heady as well. Um, so you said you're Greek. Uh, is Yomaya a Greek name? Well, no, not exactly. It's not. I have been separated from my, my father is Greek and still lives there. Oh, okay. and we've oh, wow. been out of touch for many, many years, yeah. but um, you know, I've been learning Greek, <laughs> relearning cool. it. It was actually my first language. And then, you know, it was, I lost it like by the time I was three, you know, I learned it along with English and then lost it right as I was learning how to speak. So um, starting in January, I started taking Greek uh, via Duolingo. Nice. And it's weird because it's like it's coming back to me very slowly. I'm not good with languages. I don't really get it, but it sounds so familiar. It's a very eerie experience. That's got to be wild. Yeah. I, yeah. I, I have nothing to relate to that, but I could imagine that would be a wild experience. We'll have to link up on Duolingo because I'm on there now as well. Oh, cool. I, I'm, yeah. I'm what are you learning? I'm relearning Spanish. Oh, uh, cool. I took a, like three years of it in school and uh, just, yeah, I want to get back into it. Uh, I think it'd be a bummer not to learn another language before I die. So I'm like, <laughs> I got to get back into Spanish. That'd be awesome. And I'm actually doing math as well for whatever reason, but um. Because they have a they have yeah they have math and well. music yeah mm -hmm. well, I, I saw yeah. that but um awesome well um just a funsies question are there any plants that you've been working with lately that you're particularly fond of yes and I love this question <laughs> <laughs> it's kind so, of a, a twist on the what's your favorite herb but we don't ask that question around here so yeah because you you know that's too hard to answer but I right. do so I have so I have this practice of learning about a new herb every month I don't you know sometimes I skip a few months here and there. But what I really end up doing is going back to the ones that, you know, are my have been in my circle of friends since the beginning, because those are the ones that I'm vibing with. Um, but I have one plant that has consistently been my herbal matron since the beginning of my studies. And that is none other than Urtica dioica, mm. our lovely stinging nettles. Um, I actually it started my relationship with her started with a dream. Um, of being in this open field and there was this plant spirit. And this is in my early 20s when I was just getting into herbalism. And there was a plant spirit um, with a sort of whiteboard with a picture of a plant and the words Urtica dioica. Now, I'm sure I read that somewhere. I'm sure I internalized it, but I had not worked with nettles. I had not memorized the name. And usually when I dream about words, I don't understand them or know what they were. So I woke up from that dream and I was like, huh, that looked kind of like nettles. I wonder if that's the Latin name for nettles. And I looked it up and sure enough, it was. Wow. And we, we started a lifelong friendship. I, she was with me through three pregnancies, three births of which I barely bled, which probably has to do with her vitamin K. <laughs> um, all, she was the multivitamin for all my kids and myself as well. I still do regular um, nourishing infusions of stinging nettle. And um, she, <laughs> So I have a story about how if you don't believe that herbs talk to you, here's one that was loud and clear because nettle can be kind of like a tough love mom, you know, with her little pricklies. <laughs> and um, I was out in the garden. This might have been last spring or the spring before, but it was a really like weird year and it was really late and everything was overgrown and I was really overwhelmed and I was in a bad mood. So I'm weeding and weeding and I'm kind of like complaining and just in this like really ornery place. And then out of nowhere, I must have touched a plant and like flung it back. But out of nowhere, Nettle reaches back and just bitch slaps me across the face <laughs> and woke me up. And I, I could hear the message loud and clear. It was like, bitch, don't you come up in my garden with that stank ass attitude. Get it together. <laughs> 
And so awesome. I sat with that for a moment. I thanked her. And then I ended up having a great day. But my <laughs> face hurt like hell for the rest of the day. <laughs> That's how plants sometimes have to get your attention, you know. That's but yeah, beautiful. I mean, Nettle's been an amazing. She's been my matron. She's been my teacher. Yeah. Yeah. What what a plant ally. Uh, I have to say it. Nettle has also been our family's multivitamin or one of them. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. I'm constantly giving nourishing herbal infusions, like little bits to Amanda and Amelia. I'm like, here you go. And they know what yep. to do. Just lug it back awesome. and get that mineral rich goodness. So, um, awesome. Well, we're going to wrap up a little bit. Um, I want to, I want to throw this one in as well. Uh, what's your favorite part about being an herbalist or what do you, what's something you love about being an herbalist? Every single part of it, <laughs> except the businessy stuff. Right. <laughs> No, but I think the most magical is, and this is where it never ceases to amaze me, right? You learn about all of this stuff. You learn about what herbs work for what situations. But when you actually see it happen, either in yourself or in another person, when you actually witness taking an herb and the transformation happening, it blows my mind. It's just like pure validation but it's just so magical every time. And when it happens with other people and you can see them making that connection, like, wow, this really does work. I think that's my favorite part because it's just so magical. What a beautiful way to wrap up the show. This has been a lot of fun, Yamaya. We'll, we'll definitely yeah. have to do a round two with you, whether that's in person or with Krista or via Zoom, whatever. Okay. But I, I definitely want to stay in touch and uh, continue the conversation. Yes, let's please do. Thank you so much. And uh, thanks, y'all, for listening. Big shout out and thanks to Amanda for editing this episode. And uh, we'll see you in the next episode of the Herbalist Hour. Thank you. Bye-bye. And that's going to do it for today's episode. Thanks so much for listening to the Herb Rally podcast. If you'd like to hear more from us here at Herb Rally, we now have a text message community, believe it or not. Basically, it's just updates from us. We send about one to seven texts per week, uh, notifying you about new events, videos, courses, podcasts. You get the idea. It's pretty much like our email newsletter, just in text form. So if you'd like to receive text messages from Herb Rally, just text JOIN, that's J-O-I-N, to the number 541-256-2895. Again, that's JOIN to number 541-256-2895. And to stop receiving texts, that's easy too. Just text STOP to the same number. It'll opt you out immediately. Okay, thanks again for listening. Have a great rest of your day.